Welcome to lecture 27 of biology 116 entitled respiration. In this lecture we're going to be focusing on the mechanism and purpose for organismic respiration. And what we need to understand first is this idea and difference between cell respiration and organismic respiration. So we'll begin by entitling this first flowchart as just an introduction to respiration. And again, the number one thing we have to first understand is a major difference. Because this is something we've seen before, and that is aerobic cell respiration. This is something we're familiar with and quite comfortable with. This is the idea of oxidative phosphorylation. This is the idea of getting ATP out of the electron transport chain, etc. This is going to occur within the mitochondria. This is a very cellular level, micro level of respiration. But what we're focusing on in this lecture sort of combines with this, but looks at it at a much broader perspective. What we're focusing on is something known as organismic respiration. So this is a broader context. Organismic respiration is going to be respiration, breathing, that involves gas exchange. So there's going to be an explicit gas exchange between the organism, so we're talking about the entire living thing, and its respective environment that it is living within. So there's gas exchange between the organism and the environment. That's organismic respiration. The gas exchange specifically that we want to focus in on is the exchange of oxygen and also the simultaneous exchange of carbon dioxide, both of which are really important gases when studying respiration. We'll understand their particular and specific influences as we move forward. But just know that this lecture is all about organismic respiration and not so much about the cell respiration side. Now, in order to understand organismic respiration, we need to understand a little bit about how the physics of this works. Physics and a little bit of chemistry, but nothing crazy. What we have to focus on initially is the idea of partial pressure. Partial pressure is a concept that really defines how organismic respiration is going to work. We're going to define partial pressure as the pressure exerted, so this will be the pressure exerted by a particular gas that you're interested in, that you're trying to study, whether it's oxygen, carbon dioxide, whatever it may be, by a particular gas. But the key idea here is that this particular gas, like many other gases within the environment that an organism is within, that particular gas is going to usually be found within a mixture of other gases. So we're looking for the partial pressure of oxygen, let's say. Oxygen is found in the atmosphere. Atmosphere is an environment that contains other gases besides oxygen. We're focusing or trying to figure out the particular gas of interest, which is oxygen. Again, let's remind ourselves that the air we breathe, aka the air that's involved in organismic respiration, is indeed a mixture of gases. It's not purely oxygen, nor is it purely anything else. It's a mixture of many different gases that are of focus and that we need to sort of differentiate. So in order to understand partial pressure, we have to do a very simple calculation. So let's say you want to calculate partial pressure. So let's say calculating PP for partial pressure. What we need to know is two major things. So in order to figure out the pressure exerted by a particular gas in a mixture of different gases, you need to know the total pressure, so the total P, which stands for pressure in this situation, that the entire mixture exerts. So not just the one of interest, but everything. So the entire mixture exerts. And you also need to know need to have an understanding of what fraction of this entire mixture that we're focusing on, let's say the atmosphere, the air that we breathe, what fraction of the air that we breathe is represented by the gas of interest? How much of the total pressure is exerted by, let's say, one specific gas of interest? And that would be usually in the case of respiration, the gas of interest is oxygen. So let's put this into context. Take, for example, if you want to calculate oxygen, its partial pressure at, let's say, sea level, because its partial pressure actually changes with elevation. But for right now, let's just imagine at a normal sea level. New Jersey, for the most part, is pretty much at sea level, and so that's something we can work off of. So what we notice is that the atmospheric pressure, 
the pressure of all the gases in the atmosphere, that total pressure of everything is equal to 766 millimeters mercury, mmHg. This is how we measure pressure. This is the unit of pressure, generally speaking, in physiology. 760 millimeters mercury is our total atmospheric pressure. But remember, we need to calculate partial pressure. We need to find out the fraction of the mixture that's represented by the gas of interest, which is oxygen, right? So at the atmospheric level, in our atmosphere, oxygen comprises this much fraction of the entire mixture. About 21% of the air that we breathe is oxygen. Therefore, we can calculate partial pressure by doing a very simple calculation. And that would be that the partial pressure of oxygen is equal to the fraction that which it presents itself within the mixture times the total pressure that's exerted by the entire mixture, so times 760 millimeters mercury. And that gives us our partial pressure of oxygen at sea level to be about 160 millimeters mercury. And that's a number to remember, and so is the number, the original number here, 760. That's our baseline numbers, things to definitely keep in mind as we're studying respiration. Another major rule of partial pressures is the following, and never forget this rule. It's going to drive much of what we talk about today. Gases are always going to be involved in net diffusion under the following circumstance. So we'll state that gases always undergo Gases always undergo a net diffusion. Diffusion just means movement from one place to another, but it's going to be defined as or only occurring when you have this movement from a higher partial pressure to a lower partial pressure. So just to sort of give you an idea of why we say this, the outside environment has a higher partial pressure of oxygen than the interior of our body, like our lungs. Therefore, we will always breathe in oxygen and it will diffuse easily from an area of higher pressure, our environment, to an area of lower pressure within us, in our lungs. That idea and scenario of movement of oxygen will be talked about as we move forward later in the lecture. But these are just some general partial pressure notes to keep in mind. This is what really respiration studying and physiology is grounded upon. So what we want to first talk about are some organisms known as small aquatic organisms and sort of apply what we've just understood about the basics of, under, uh, about the basics of studying respiration. So if you look at small aquatic organisms and what defines small in this situation is organisms that are less than one millimeter thick. So we're talking about very, very small living things. These will have no specialized, they won't have a very advanced circulatory system or respiratory system, but they still will undergo some sort of respiration because what they do is they are going to do their organismic respiration based off of, and they rely on simple diffusion because they're so small. That's the reason why they use simple diffusion. That's what's going to supply all gas exchange needs for these simple, small aquatic organisms. Because again, even though they're small, they every single living thing needs to do this type of needs to do some sort of cell respiration, whether it's aerobic or anaerobic. But for the most part, what we're focusing on right now are aerobically breathing organisms. Therefore, even small aquatic organisms need to do aerobic cell respiration. That means they will need to get some sort of gas exchange between themselves and the environment. That gas exchange is going to be done via simple diffusion which means that O2, which comes from the atmosphere, simply diffuses into the organism because the organism is so small it can just diffuse O2 in and guess what? It can get rid of the byproduct of cell respiration, CO2, it will just simply diffuse out of the organism. Diffuses out of the organism. So it's a very simple way to do respiration at the organismic level. Now, in addition, with these small aquatic organisms, what we need to make sure we understand is that the cell membrane of every cell that's within them, there's not that many, therefore every cell and its associated cell membrane is in direct contact with the external environment. Because they're so small, 
you have this direct contact with the external environment and we'll say that this is due to, of course, like I just said, their small size. This is what allows every cell, therefore, to undergo simple diffusion in which O2 can come in and CO2 can go out because O2 is at a higher concentration on the outside environment of these small organisms and CO2 is at a higher concentration on the inside. Therefore, if it's higher on the outside, it's going to come into the organism, and if it's higher on the inside, it's going to go out of the organism following this law of partial pressures. Examples of small aquatic organisms include things like hydras, flatworms, and sponges. Those will undergo this very basic type of organismic respiration. As we move forward now, we're going to get more advanced in terms of how we study respiration by now looking at different respiratory structures.